In this recording, I wish to continue our study in the book of Ephesians. We're coming now into chapter 5, but in order to give the context, I want to read some verses at the end of the fourth chapter, and then we'll read into the following chapter 5. And so our scripture reading is taken from Ephesians chapter 4. We begin to read at verse 28. Let him that stole steal no more, but rather let him labour, working with his hands the thing which is good, that he may have to give to him that needeth. Let no corrupt communication proceed out of your mouth, but that which is good, to the use of edifying, that it may minister grace unto the hearers. And grieve not the Holy Spirit of God, whereby ye are sealed unto the day of redemption. Let all bitterness and wrath and anger and clamour and evil speaking be put away from you with all malice. And be ye kind one to another, tender hearted, forgiving one another, even as God for Christ's sake hath forgiven you. Be ye therefore followers of God as dear children, and walk in love, as Christ also hath loved us, and hath given himself for us an offering and a sacrifice to God for a sweet-smelling savour. But fornication and all uncleanness or covetousness, let it not be once named among you as becometh the saints, neither filthiness nor foolish talking nor jesting, which are not convenient, but rather giving of thanks. For this ye know that no whoremonger, nor unclean person, or covetous man who is an idolater, of any inheritance in the kingdom of Christ and of God. Let no man deceive you with vain words. For because of these things cometh the wrath of God upon the children of disobedience. Be not ye therefore partakers with them. For ye were sometimes darkness, but now are ye light in the Lord. Walk as children of light. For the fruit of the Spirit is in all goodness and righteousness and truth, proving what is acceptable unto the Lord. We'll end our reading at verse 10 of chapter 5. May the Lord bless his word and its reading to our hearts. The verses I'd like to leave before you are found in Ephesians chapter 5. Verses 1 and 2, particularly the first verse. Be ye therefore followers of God as dear children, and walk in love as Christ also hath loved us, and hath given himself for us, an offering, and a sacrifice to God for a sweet smelling savour. Be ye therefore followers of God as dear children. And with our text before us, we'll bow just for a moment in prayer. Eternal and our everlasting God and Father, we give thee thanks that we are able to come into thy presence. We thank thee that we are accepted in the beloved. We rejoice, O God, that we have in Christ our mediator, and the one who hath satisfied divine justice and provided a full and a free and a complete salvation for sinners. We bless the Lord for those who are looking in at this time, who know the joy of sins forgiven. We thank thee for the word of God that liveth and abideth forever. We thank thee that thy word is truth. It is forever settled in heaven. It is a light and a lamp unto us. And O oh God, we come to thy word and we acknowledge that we need thee to give that discernment and the knowledge that's required to rightly divide the word of truth. We realize, O oh God, that the natural man receiveth not the things of the Spirit of God. We acknowledge, O oh God, that we need the Holy Spirit to give enlightenment and instruction and teaching and Lord we need thy wisdom to rightly divide the word of truth 
Give that grace and that help in the preaching of thy word now. We ask, O God, that thou wilt open our hearts and open our minds. And we pray that the word of God that we hear will be outworked then in our lives for the glory of Jesus Christ. We want to be holy. We want to live for thee. We want to bear witness and testimony to thee in our lives. Man's chief end is to glorify God. And that's what we want to do as God's people. And so, O oh God, make us pliable. Let us give ourselves and yield ourselves and present our bodies a living sacrifice, wholly acceptable unto God, which is our reasonable service. And so speak to us through the holy word of God and its preaching. Lord, we think about our congregation. We're aware that there are those who are sick in the congregation. Some are in hospital, others at home. Oh God, be with them. Encourage their hearts. Let them know the touch of God in their bodies. Oh God, bless their families and those who would be concerned about them at this time. Father, we pray for our elderly and the infirm. We ask that again the Lord himself will minister to them the very grace and the blessing that they need. We're glad, O oh God, that thou art one who cares for us, that we can cast all our care upon him. And, O oh God, we desire of thee that thou wilt then bless thy people. Remember all of our congregation and those who associate themselves with our work. And we pray that the blessing of God will rest on them. Remember the bereaved and the troubled. We commit them to God and to thy care again. And so be with us now as we spend these few moments around the word of God and in the things of God. In Jesus' holy and worthy name. Amen. The entrance into this new chapter 5 of the book of Ephesians brings us to consider the family aspect of being a child of God. The previous chapter portrayed the believer as part of a body. Now chapter 5 pictures the child of God as part of a family. Firstly, we are pictured in the family situation under the illustration of the child. Because verse 1 speaks of us being children, the children of God. Verse 8 deals with us then as children of light. And then from verse 22 onwards, we have the Spirit of God dealing with the husband and the wife relationship. And again, of course, there's the thought of the family there. And as it is with chapter 4 of Ephesians, this fifth chapter is concerned with really our holiness of life, our walk before man and before God in holiness of life. That holiness coming through in the practical everyday affairs of life. I want you to note as we come to this text, verse 1 tonight, I want you to notice firstly the introduction to this text. Because chapter 5 verse 1 begins with the, the phrase, Be ye therefore followers of God as dear children. Whenever you and I think of a follower, we might think of someone or something who takes an interest in a particular thing. It might, for example, be a follower of a football team or on social media, a follower, someone who chooses to see messages and pictures posted by another person. Or the word follower might be used in regard to what a dog does after its owner. It follows him or her wherever they go, follows them around. But that's not the meaning of the word followers here in this opening verse. Rather, the word here means to be an imitator or someone who copies literally the word is mimic. Our word mimic comes from the very word 
that the apostle Paul used in the, the Greek language in this verse. To mimic someone, of course, is to act there. Act perhaps the way they speak or walk, especially if they're a bit eccentric or out of the ordinary. It's to try to be like them. And that literally is what the Bible is here saying, that you and I, as God's people, are to do in relation to the Lord. We are, therefore, to be imitators of God or mimics of God. That is quite a remarkable thing to say, I suppose, in that we are to resemble God and we can resemble God or we're to get as near to resembling God as we possibly can while we live upon this earth. That brings me then to highlight to you the limitation in this text. Because if you think about it, of course, there are many areas where we are unable to imitate the Lord. We sometimes speak about the attributes of God. The Lord's attributes are his qualities, his features. Those things that make him who and what he is. And we discover as we study the word of God that the Lord's attributes may be divided into two groups. There are attributes of God that cannot be communicated to human beings. For example, his glory. You and I cannot imitate the glory of God. Neither can we know God's eternity. Because God, of course, is from eternity to eternity. He is without beginning. While you and I are created beings, we don't have that aspect. Nor can we obtain that aspect of always having been in existence. Nor can we attain to God's majesty or his omnipotence, his total supremacy and his sovereign power nor can we attain to his omnipresence, that ability to be present everywhere in all his fullness at the one time. You and I are limited in regard to these matters. We cannot attain to his omniscience, the attitude or the attribute of knowing all things. These are beyond our scope as mere human beings. They're, they're out of our reach. They're too high up on the shelf, as it were. We can never attain to them, nor can we in, imitate God in them. But there are other attributes which can be communicated to us and in which we can and we ought to and indeed we must imitate God. For example, love. The child of God can know something of the love that the Lord extends to mankind. The believer can know holiness. The Lord says in his word, be ye holy, for I am holy. The believer can know mercy also, and he can extend mercy to his fellow human beings. So that there are these and there are other attributes of God as well that we can experience. And we can know and we can demonstrate. Now, of course, it is right to say that we can never know these and other attributes in the manner and to the extent that the Lord knows and exhibits them. But we can know them in a measure. And in these matters and in this regard, you and I as the people of God, we are to imitate the Lord. So that we are not just to be good people. Nor are we as believers merely to imitate other believers. Although there's nothing wrong with looking at the lives of some other child of God that sets a good example and seeking to copy or to follow them. Rather we're to set our sights higher. And the Bible says that we are to seek to mimic the Lord and we are to seek to be like him in these attributes that can be communicated or passed on to us I like you to think also about the illustration as it's highlighted in this verse why 
are you to be an imitator of God? Well, the verse gives the reason. That reason is used by means of an illustration because it illustrates the fact that you are one of his dear children. That's why you should be like God in your walk, in your life, in your attitude, in where you go and what you say. Because you're one of his dear children. Think firstly about the likeness of the child. Now, if you have a child or children, that child or those children will most likely resemble you either by their nature. If you're calm and laid back, perhaps your child will show the same trait. Or they will show how like they are to you by their abilities. If you are bright educationally, so will they most probably. They'll resemble you by their looks. There'll be similarities in the facial features, for example. If you're tall, they may be tall. If you're short, they may be short. Therefore, me being a son of my parents, I'll have some sort of resemblance to them. That really is the, the law of family life and of reproduction. I read of a lady by the name of Nanette Hammond from Ohio in the United States. She's a mother of five. Who has spent, it was reported, £350,000 on numerous surgeries and procedures to get herself to look like a Barbie doll. But you don't need surgery to look like your parents. It's a natural thing. And you bring that thought over into the spiritual and you consider what the Lord Jesus said in John chapter 8 and verse 44 to the scribes and the Pharisees, ye are of your father the devil and the lusts of your father ye will do. You see, that family principle that I have mentioned in the natural family applies in the spiritual as well. Because what Christ was saying there in John 8, 44 is that the children of darkness, the children of the devil, if you like, do what he does. They imitate him. There's the family resemblance. Because that satanical nature is within them. And that satanical nature is demonstrated in what they do and in what they say, according to the words of the Lord Jesus. They mimic the devil. That's how we live prior to our conversion. We imitated Satan. We lived like him. We thought like him. We acted like him. We sinned with impunity like him. Oh, but what a change grace has made in our hearts and in our lives. Because now, being the children of God, we are called to mimic the Lord. Just as it's natural to the ungodly to mimic Satan in his attitude, his aims, his activities, mimicking the Lord is something that ought to come naturally to you as a child of God. Be ye therefore mimics of God, imitators of God, followers of God. Why? Because you ought to bear the resemblance of your father. Your spiritual father. In John chapter 1 and the verse 12, Christ maintained through his holy word, but as many as received him, to them gave he power to become the sons of God, even to them that believe on his name. The word power indicates the right or the dignity as well as the ability. And so those with the nature of Christ in them, those who are inhabited, by God, the Holy Ghost will mimic the Lord. They'll want to live for Christ. And they'll want to live unto the Lord. 
And so the Bible maintains. You've got to put a serious question mark upon those who profess faith in Christ, but in their life and actions, they don't bear any resemblance to Christ whatsoever. And then consider the link with the child. Why should I mimic the Lord? Because I am linked in this great relationship with the Lord Almighty. You think about the child in the natural sense. And the child naturally is the representative of his or her family. That's one of the reasons why you've told your child to behave themselves whenever they go out somewhere. Because if they're bad-mannered, if they're ill-tempered, it reflects upon you as a parent. Other people looking at your child and its mischievous behaviour or its bad behaviour will say to themselves, oh, how has that child been brought up? Have the parents taught them nothing? Because it's not the child, you see, who gets the brunt of the criticism. It's the parent. And therefore, bad behaviour on the part of the child reflects negatively upon the whole family and upon the family name, yes, but especially the parent. And again, it is exactly the same in relation to the spiritual. You and I, as God's people, we can never divorce ourselves from our relationship with the Lord. We can't say, I want to be saved. I want to go to heaven, but I don't want the Christian life. No, it doesn't work that way. There are many who try. But every time you sin, and every time you behave in a manner that is unbecoming of a child of God, you are bringing discredit not only to your own name, not only to the Church of Christ generally, but more importantly and more particularly, you are bringing discredit to the name of the Lord himself. Nathan, the prophet Nathan in 2 Samuel 12 verse 14 spoke of David in regard to his great sin in his transgression with Bathsheba, the wife of Uriah. And Nathan said to David, By this deed, thou hast given great occasion to the enemies of the Lord to blaspheme. They didn't so much blaspheme David's name. No, the enemies of the Lord, they blasphemed the Lord's name in David's sin. And therefore David, by his crime, he brought shame upon the Lord. You'd never want to do that. Many a young man, a young woman has refused to go to a public house perhaps or get involved in some crime maybe because they didn't want to hurt the family name. And so they thought of their, their mother, their father, and they had too much respect for their mother or father to get involved in that thing that they knew they ought not. That's how to live spiritually. Never forget that whatever else you are, first and foremost, you're a child of God. He has begotten you. The Lord has redeemed you. You belong to him. You identify with him. That's why you should imitate him. And walk like him. And obey him. And there must be love on the part of the child. If we're to imitate the Lord. Because in verse 1 we are described as dear children. The word is beloved. As beloved children. We are beloved of God. The word that's used is a variation of the word in the Greek, agapeo, which highlights the most intense form of love, the love that the Lord exhibits. And that's what he here reminds you, that you are beloved of God, you're dear to him, in the sense that he loves you. 
if he loves you then and he does isn't it but right that you demonstrate something of that love in return if you're dear to him he ought to be dear to you as you remember all that he has done for you Ephesians chapter 5 and the verse 1 contains the word therefore be ye therefore followers of God that word therefore refers you back to the previous chapter and more particularly to the previous verse which is the last verse of chapter 4 and there we read and be ye kind one to another tender hearted forgiving one another even as God for Christ's sake hath forgiven you why do we love him why should we love him why should he be dear to us because we discover in that verse 32 that God for Christ's sake hath forgiven us we'd never want to dishonor him because he has forgiven us a multitude of sins already and one of the ways that you and I show our love for him is by how we treat others look at what verse 32 says he has treated us well he has forgiven us all of our sins and you and I then we are to treat others in the same way as he has treated us that's really the ultimate in imitating the Lord it is acting as he has acted dealing with others as he has dealt with us often we're negligent in this particular matter we forget what the Lord has done for us and we forget that Christ has shed his blood and we forget that Christ has given himself an offering and a sacrifice as verse 2 says and laid down his life and given his body to be broken we forget the cross we forget what he has done we take it all so much for granted and in forgetting these things we forget the proper way to treat others then as well because as I say we are to treat others as God has treated us in that we are imitating the Lord mimicking him you see all of this comes back to the cross and to Christ and to his sacrifice on our behalf and sometimes we forget to treat others correctly and in these matters we fail to mimic the Lord because we have forgotten what the Lord has done for us you and I ought to spend time at the cross studying Christ contemplating Christ remembering all that he has done for us because you see it is at the cross and we get to the cross through the, the reading and the study and the contemplation of the word of God it's at the cross that we learn more and more of him you'll know the saying you get like the company you keep well if you keep company with Christ you become more and more like Christ and hence the word of God highlights to us and reminds us that we are to be followers or imitators of God as beloved children dear children oh dear child of God be like Christ contemplate and think upon him often every day take time every day to visit the cross even if it's only for a few moments get into the habit of visiting the cross and slowly but surely you become more and more like him you begin to mimic the Lord more and more you might not even realize that you're doing it but thank God the spirit of God will work in your heart 
and conform you more and more to his image. Be ye therefore followers or imitators of God as dear children. May the Lord bless his word to your heart. We'll bow in a word of prayer. Lord and Father, we thank thee for the word of God. We thank thee for its simplicity and its plainness. We thank thee that the word is that which blesses our souls. And oh, we thank thee that guilty sinners can be so transformed that they become like the Lord himself. Oh, what power there's in the precious blood. What grace there is here. Grace sufficient. Grace abundant. Lord, help us as thy people to be more and more like the Lord in our thought, in our attitude, in our behaviour. Let us mimic the Lord faithfully and sincerely and with honesty and help us, O God, to walk with thee and walk for thee in Jesus' holy and precious name. Separate us in thy fear with thy blessing. Amen.